Hey guys, it's Joe, and welcome to episode two of my podcast. Yes, in between the last episode now, I have named the podcast, and you know, you might be thinking, how did you come to the creative naming that you did? Well, I was sitting down after I recorded the last one, and I just thought to myself, you know, um, what am I going to name it? What am I going to name my podcast? And then that dawned on me. And I thought, okay, let's let's remove some words from that sentence. And I got it down to uh, my podcast. And then I took away the space between the two words. And boom, you have a podcast name. Um, if you're listening to this and you've listened to the first one or uh, two minutes, which my YouTube analytics says is the most people watched, then you already know the name of this because that's what I called it on YouTube. But... Um, when I recorded the last one, I didn't have a name picked out, so I felt the name to point attention to that, and I've now wasted a whole one minute of your time. Um, you might also be noticing, if you're comparing the two podcast episodes, this episode sounds a lot better, mostly because I'm recording it with my so snowball microphone real quick. I'm going to pick you guys up, uh, my microphone, so my camera can see it. Uh, I have my camera recording me. Um, because I thought after I posted the last podcast on YouTube, I, I kind of wanted to just have a visual feed of, um, my face as I was doing this because I thought that would be more entertaining to watch if you're going to watch it, uh, than just a blue screen with a, a cartoon version of my head. So I set up my camera. I'm now recording my face. Hello. Um, if I'm not looking into the lens, it's because I'm focusing on my microphone, um, also, something else I noticed, because you may or may not know this, because you may be listening to this on YouTube, which is probably where you're listening to this, I post this podcast on an app called Anchor. Um, if you're listening to this on Anchor, shout out to you, you get the podcast early, because I just upload the podcast and be like, hey, it's done, uh, and then I post these on my YouTube channel on Saturday. Um, I post these on Anchor, for those of you that watch it on YouTube, which is an app that I found maybe two or three months ago, um, and I made a podcast, my podcast, um, and I uploaded it. Turns out, when you make a podcast through Anchor, it also uploads it to the Google Play Music Store, as well as uh, iTunes. So, this podcast is on Google Play and iTunes, which is pretty cool to think about, um wasn't something I anticipated happening, but it happened nonetheless, so if you're listening to this on one of those platforms, which you're probably not, uh, shout out to you. Um, a lot has happened to me between me recording this podcast and the last one. For example, I got very, very sick, uh, like a really bad cold for two weeks. I recorded the last podcast, I think, in I don't know when I recorded it. I honestly, it, it it was a very long time for me recording it and me actually posting it. I genuinely don't know, but it was a very long period of time between then and now. Uh, I got a very bad cold that kicked my ass for like two weeks, mostly because of my job. Um, I had a cold and then going to a job. I work at McDonald's, which most people probably like roll their eyes and think it's like a super like easy job and like the concept is but when you work at a place that's short staffed consistently uh you find yourself overexerting quite a bit and um as a as a young adult who needs to be able to pay his bills and uh still have a roof above their head um calling off and taking a rest like my mother suggested just isn't an option so i kind of just bit the pillow and kept going uh which now that I think about it, probably wasn't a good idea. It's probably what prolonged my cold. But there's nothing I can do about that now. I've just got to move on. Uh, I don't, I don't, I don't know what else to say. I'm better now. Aside from, I kind of have some phlegm in my throat, which is. I don't need to be talking about phlegm. Uh, what I do want to talk about real quick is I've developed a quite a quite a taste for Taco Bell recently. Um, I was at the mall the other day, and our mall has a food court, and for the first time in my life, I tried a quesarito from Taco Bell, which has been around for a while, like, probably like three years, I think, um, 
I've just, I've never tried it because I'm picky. I just, I'm not interested in trying new things very often, to be honest with you, but I was hungry and I was trying to find things on the menu that were similar to this burrito I really liked. I think it was called the Beefy Cheese Burrito. It was a temporary burrito. They were $1. I ate a lot of them when they were around. Uh, they regulated my bathroom schedule quite a bit. And I was longing for the taste of this. So I was looking on the Taco Bell website. And I was like fiddling around with the customization options. And I stumbled across the Quesarito, which, if you don't know, is a burrito wrapped in a quesadilla, which is just cheese. Oh, God. Oh, God. It was so good. <sighs> I'm angry at myself for not having tried it sooner, which I get. I get it. I get why I did. I'm picky. I don't like spending money on foods that I don't know that I'm going to like, but that's besides the point because Oh, I need to I need to become more adventurous with my food tasting. I get chicken strips pretty much everywhere I go. Um, it's because it's hard to mess up chicken strips, and I know I'll be getting a good bang for my buck for the most part. But anyways, I tried a quesarito. I got them without sour cream and chipotle because uh, I don't like flavor, apparently. <laughs> I like cheese. I like cheese, rice, and seasoned beef. I get the beef quesaritos. Very good. Um, I was never a Taco Bell kid growing up, really, uh, just because, like, when you, when you think about people being fast food kids, like I say in quotes, uh, like people were like, oh, yeah, I was a Burger King kid. You, you never hear anybody say, oh, yeah, I was a Taco Bell kid. I didn't know that people could be ad adamantly in love with Taco Bell until I met my friend Chris in high school. During high school, that man, his, his biological makeup was, like, 90% Mountain Dew and Taco Bell. Uh, but fortunately for him, he's gotten out of that to an extent. He does consume a lot of Taco Bell breakfast. But to be fair, Taco Bell breakfast may, may have the best fast food breakfast. I'm just saying it's a contender. I haven't sat down and done the research myself, but there's an option there. Um, but I wasn't a Taco Bell kid. I was, I was more of a McDonald's kid, which is kind of ironic, considering where I work now. It's kind of like, you really can't escape the past when you think about it. Um, <laughs> I don't want this depression. Uh, this, I don't want this depression. I don't want this podcast to become depression-related. Um, but I was more of a McDonald's kid. Uh, so as I got older and had Taco Bell more often, which... I've had Taco Bell a lot recently, mostly because I, I absolutely adore Baja Blast. It is just my favorite Mountain Dew flavor. Uh, it is a travesty that they got rid of them selling in stores, uh, especially because now I've gotten really addicted to it, and the only way I can go get it is at Taco Bell. And the large cups at Taco Bell just aren't large enough. Maybe that makes me sound like a uh, stereotypical American with our huge portion sizes, but screw it. I'm spoiled. That's just kind of how life is. You know, thinking about how much time has been between the last two podcasts, I wanted to have some topics written down to talk about, uh, and I actually managed to have one. I wrote it down in a notebook I have here. Um, I haven't looked at it since I wrote it down. Um, what makes me chuckle, because I looked at it right before I started recording it, the only thing I have written down, mind you, I had probably a month between recording sessions to think of things to talk about. And the only thing I managed to write down was some people plan their weddings. I've been planning my funeral. <laughs> now, I feel the need to clarify uh, I am not a suicidal individual. Uh, I do have, like, depression and whatnot, but I've never been suicidal. Um, I don't have any urge and desire to die now. I enjoy life to an extent. I enjoy things about life. Uh, beef quesaritos, um, Marvel movies. The Walking Dead starts back soon. That's kind of cool. Um, where was my train of thought? Oh, yes. Living. Uh, so I'm a big fan of, you know, living for the most part. Why I've been planning my funeral, I feel like I should explain. So I don't like the general concept of funerals. I just, I just don't. They're dreary and dull, and I get it. When you think about a funeral, what are funerals for? Like, what... What do you get to accomplish out of a funeral? Um, families coming together and 
grieving collectively, but ultimately funerals are for the living, to grieve the dead. But I am a selfish prick, <laughs> and I want my funeral to match some very specific criteria. I want... I want my funeral to be fun, like really fun. I have general, I want, and these are just spit mulling ideas. I haven't put a lot of thought into this, but I have been thinking a lot about wanting my funeral to be planned out to a T um, for a few reasons. One, because I feel like I want my funeral to, I don't know, go about and sort of just accentuate who I was as a person. I want my funeral to scream me. Uh, and two, if I have my funeral planned out, then I leave my descendants, if I have descendants or people that I care about me and God knows how long, hopefully I have people that care about me, the people who will put me in the ground, um, I will leave them a roadmap. So they have to do no planning whatsoever. It's all planned out. Uh, I They just load up a USB drive with all of my plans on it. I'll have a, a little video of myself pre-death. I'll probably make a joke about, eh, probably didn't think you'd be having a conversation with me, especially since I'm dead. Well, thanks to technology, this is possible. Um, they can just load the USB on. Boom. I'm there talking to them, telling them exactly what I want. One of the things I want is an open bar. You know, for someone who can't buy alcohol or consume alcohol because I'm under the age of 21 for uh, three more months, the thought, the thought of an open bar just sounds very fun. Um, the thought that people can come... Well, maybe that's not a good idea. Because alcohol removes inhibitions. I don't know. I Maybe alcohol would be okay if I have a lot of people who really liked me. But if, there was, if, I, if I really screw people over in the next given amount of time before my death, and I have an open bar and an open funeral, God knows what trouble that could create now that I think about it. Just anybody who, Nancy, my second, my second ex-wife comes in, talks to everybody that, you know, I'm close to and my family and whatnot, got my dogs, they're sitting next to the grave. Nancy's a bitch <laughs> in this hypothetical. Uh, Nancy, my ex-wife, she's just the worst. She was the worst. All she did was complain. Nothing I did was good enough for her. Well, Nancy probably been divorced 30 years by the time of my death, comes to my funeral, has an open bar, gets a couple drinks, maybe some, uh, maybe a margarita, some fireball, something, you know, alcoholic, maybe in Red's Apple Ale, uh, something to get a little bit loose. Well, she also tends to be uh, a bit of an alcoholic, and uh, there's no IDs, there's no, hey, are you a member of the local AA meetings? Free bar. No, no double checking. Nancy gets a few drinks in her. Next thing you know, she's tipping over my casket and talking about how much of a piece of shit I was. Now that I think about it, I'm just going to avoid everybody in my life around my age named Nancy. <laughs> just so this hypothetical doesn't accidentally come to truth. Um, which I don't think will be a hard thing because I'm 20 in uh, 2017. I don't quite think there are going to be anybody my age named Nancy. At least... A very, very small minority of uh, women called Nancy in my age range. Uh, I'm going to do a Google of this uh, thought after this video and uh, see how many people in my age range are named Nancy. I can't I can't imagine it's a great number. Um, we're going to go with it. We're going to go with the open bar. You know, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what negative things might happen. We're just going to go with it. It might be fun. It might, it might add some uh, interesting tension to the entire ordeal. I also want a um, Snapchat geo filter. Now, this is a bit... I'm reaching a bit with this one because who's to say Snapchat's going to be around when I die? Um, if I die soon, Snapchat will be around. Hopefully not. Um, hopefully not to dying. I actually really enjoy Snapchat quite a bit, so hopefully Snapchat's around. But um, hopefully Snapchat's around when I die. I want to have my own custom geo filter. I think that'd be the greatest thing, just going to a family function, a funeral, and you're just, you just, you're just, my, my grandkids at the time just sitting there, they're texting their friends or whatever the, the modern incarnation of that will be, 
Um, they'll be snapping their friends. They throw a throw a, a geo filter of Grandpa's funeral on. No better way to make their story lively. On top of the geo filter, I'd also kind of like just permanent like ongoing looping screens and a lot of funerals actually have those um so it's not a strange concept uh, a lot of them have uh slideshows of pictures of you know the re recently deceased uh, in their life and happy moments and things like that i don't want pictures however i want a non-stop loop of every youtube video i've made to that point and i genuinely mean every single youtube video that means every video I made when I was 12, uh, every video game video I made, <laughs> and that's probably close to 300, um, and a lot of those are 20 minutes apiece, so you know, maybe maybe we'll actually forego, we'll just, let's cut out the video game videos just because that would take up most of the funeral and the procession, I feel like. Um, so we'll jump straight from 12 years old to uh, 20. <laughs> we'll jump straight from there. And we'll see all of all of my vlogs and all of my sketches and and skits and things like that in chronological order, of course, so you can see the progression of how things happen. Uh, and these podcasts too. These podcasts, because I have put them on the internet now, they are in video form. Um, I want these to be played on the screen too. So, oh my God, I just gave myself the greatest opportunity I think anybody can give. I have the opportunity to talk to my funeral through this podcast because that is this will be in the chronological order of my videos so uh if you're listening to this podcast um we're watching it on youtube i just i want to thank you for listening this far if you have a lot of it has been rambling i took one topic and somehow got a lot of time out of it um but this this next section isn't necessarily for you this is to talk to the residents and uh, attendees of my funeral. So bear with me for just a second as I speak to these future attendees, hopefully that exist. And uh, yeah, well, I'll see you guys in a second. All right. Hello. Um, if you're at this funeral, I'm deceased, which that sucks. I, I like living. There's not many possibilities of being dead. Um, not a big fan of sleep in general, so I can't imagine death would be much different. But hey, I guess I don't have a choice at this point. I am dead. Yeah, that's it. Bye. All right, so thank you for sitting through that as I left that video message for the attendees of my funeral. Um, thinking about playing all of these videos at once just kind of made me realize what a unique opportunity I had. Um... Something else that was on my mind recently, aside from my death, um, I, as I mentioned before, I work at McDonald's, and one of the aspects of working at McDonald's in the fast food industry is the person who handles money. Now, I'm not a big, um, I don't gross out easily, so I've seen a lot of posts on social media from people I, I know that work in service fields, like grocery stores and, uh, you know, retail stores and things like that. A lot of them have complained about, you know, money interacting with certain body parts. For example, you know, larger women who keep, you know, cash in, in their chest, uh, in their bras and whatnot, thinking about how, oh, that's very disgusting. I, uh, I'm, I'm not, I'm not too squeamish about that kind of thing. I don't know why. Maybe it's just because I didn't ever expect to be in a position where I interacted with the public. When I was younger, I had very, very bad social anxiety. Um, I could not order my own food at McDonald's, let alone take somebody else's order. Uh, I would have to tell my mom ahead of time what I wanted. So basically, I have done big things in my life so far. <laughs> I have achieved many great things by just conquering anxiety, which is a great thing. You need if you if you have anxiety and you've conquered it, pat yourself on the back right now because that is an achievement all its own. It's just it's something. Anyways. Uh, I'm not very squeamish about gross things, uh, at least when it comes to interacting with with money and whatnot. Um, because when you think about it, money's interacted with a lot of gross shit. There's not much you can do to prevent it. Are you going to carry around um, a pair of leather gloves in your back pocket at all times just for the strange encounter that you might interact with some money? No, probably not. It, this, this isn't whatever century they had 
duels with gloves. You probably don't have gloves at the ready. Um, but, you know, I'm rambling. Anyways, I'm not squeamish with that, I've said for the third time now. Well, I was taking some money uh, quite a bit ago. But this was on my mind, so I wanted to talk about it before I peace out here. Now, this money that I received wasn't very gross. Um, let me quickly talk about another pet peeve of mine. If you go to a fast food restaurant and uh, you really want to be a dick, pay an all change. Just nothing but change. Uh, because odds are, if they care about their job and care about making sure that their drawer is right, they have to sit there and count out all of your money. Um... Maybe this isn't a bad thing. Maybe you get a drink, and it's like a dollar something. Okay, change, pay and change, all you want, that's fine. This man paid for a $20 order and nothing but change. Now, that's only where the story begins. Imagine how, how, okay, just imagine where this is going. So, this guy doesn't have a wallet. I don't know that for a fact. I'm assuming he doesn't have a wallet since he paid me an all change. All of this change... I could see into his car was living in his cup holder. So God knows two things. One, how long that change had been there. And two, how he knew he had the exact amount to pay for this order. There, it was a $20 order. And he knew for a fact he had $20 of change in there. I don't know whether he has like a book where he keeps track. Every time he throws a dime in there, he just writes it down. I don't know. Nonetheless, he paid me in $20 of change. Uh, I've been changed, paid in a lot of change before. Uh, for example, a lovely older woman came through and paid me uh, in nothing but bank rolls of coins, which is better because it's a bank roll of coins, and you know for a fact it has the amount that it says on it, so that's not so bad. But this man, loose change, dimes, nickels, quarters, everything. I... Just the thought of that alone would be enough to irritate some people. Myself at the time included. I wasn't having a great day. I was pushing through. And then this guy came. Well, I accepted it because I can't not. It's my job. So I take all of his money. But right as he's about to hand me the money, in two fistfuls of money, now that I think about it, I don't, I'm not certain he knew he had enough. I'm assuming he was going to hand me change and have me count it and then me tell him how much he still owed, and then get more handfuls of change. Now that I think about it, that's absolutely what he did. God, that guy really got one over on me. Anyways, two handfuls of change this man is handing to me. And right as he reaches his hand out to drop the first one, he goes... And this is, this is a statement that literally can only have been made in the past, like, five years of human existence. This is not a saying that could have been made any other time. But as he reached his hand out to put the change in my hand, he went, I'm sorry it's sticky. I promise it's not beer. I spilled a whole thing of vape juice in my cup holder. I almost wish it had have been beer. Actually, no. I, I'm still, I don't know. I need to conduct some tests on the, the sticky ratio between beer and vape juice. But I can't imagine beer would have been more sticky than an unloaded bottle of vape juice. This was the most inconvenient experience I have, one of the most inconvenient experiences I've ever had working in a fast food restaurant. And that's all I've ever worked. I had to peel apart some of these coins because they were literally stuck together. The man ended up being $1.50 short and then having to pay with card. I think that's the bit that pissed me off the most, is the guy paid in nothing but change, and he made the joke, he's like, eh, gotta get rid of some of this change, eh? No. You paid me, like, $19 in coins, and then paid me the other dollar and some change on your card. I'm assuming you had at least 20 on your card. I don't, I don't know why you thought that paying with change would be the most convenient avenue for you, but it wasn't. If you're listening to this, you know who you are. <laughs> I'm glad you know who you are, because I don't remember what you look like. I don't even remember what this guy, I don't know, I don't even remember what this guy sounded like. I just remember this very adamantly, because it was like, ugh. Uh, but it was an experience. <laughs> I've now 
rambled about vape juice for far longer than I wanted to. And I'm reaching about the 25 minute mark on this video slash podcast. So if you've listened this far, thank you. I appreciate your time. I genuinely do. Thank you for giving me as much of your time as you've given me at this point. Um, if you're listening to this on Anchor, go ahead and, uh, you know, actually, I don't know much about Anchor. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Call in. That's what you can do. Uh, you can't, like, leave a comment, I don't think. Go ahead and call in if you've listened this far on Anchor. Tell me if you enjoyed listening to me talk. Probably not. If you're watching this on YouTube, um, let me know if you prefer this being a video format as opposed to just a s stagnant picture. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe while you're at it. Uh... If we were in 2010, I would tell you to add this video to your favorites, but that's not a thing anymore. Um, anyways, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I will catch you guys on the next episode of the podcast. So, uh, peace. <laughs>